Hi y'all, this is So So Blessed. Welcome to the Blessed Place. How y'all doing? I am back in the kitchen. Well, not back in the kitchen, because I've been in the kitchen. It's just that y'all haven't seen me in the kitchen because it's quite difficult to try to cook and hold this camera. But today, my daughter is here. <laughs> She's over there going, what? <laughs> So she will be my camera person and I, she's over there moaning and groaning because I want her to be my camera person. Don't matter. <laughs> I got the camera on you, Derrica, so they can see you huffing and puffing over there. <laughs> Complaining. So today I'm cooking spaghetti squash and then I'm going to saute some onions and mushroom together and put it over that spaghetti squash and we're going to have some cabbage. Okay you guys, first I'm going to prepare my spaghetti squash and I'll show you how I cut it up and put it in the oven. Okay, so I'm going to just slice the end of the spaghetti squash only because it makes it a little bit easier to cut. Okay, I'm slicing. I really need to get my um my knives sharpened and that's why I miss my daddy because daddy would normally sharpen the knives Oops. Whew. that is a workout okay so I'm just going to set it like that once I've cut that part that makes it easier to slice into this way be careful don't cut up your hand oops and it's not even quite even I didn't even make it even. It's supposed to be even, y'all. Look at that, <laughs> baby. <laughs> but it's supposed to be even. So if you can get that even, then even it out. Some people cut out the seeds prior to cooking, and some people leave the seeds in and scoop them out afterwards. So I'll take it out now. I'm going to slice around here just to make it a little easier to take out my seeds. Hmm. <laughs> Too much work. Too much work, Derrica. Mm -hmm. It's worth it. Okay. Scoop out all the seeds that I don't want. Drizzle a little olive oil there. And then dust it with my Duster. little brush, little duster. But if you don't have one of those, by all means, just use your fingers. And then put me some salt. And this is optional, of course, but it does add to the flavor. And pepper. And this is definitely optional, garlic. But I love a garlic taste on about anything. And it does add some flavor there. Now, I have seen... There are several YouTube videos that said that you should do this flesh up and flesh down. And I, more videos have said flesh down than flesh up, so I'm going to do it like that. You know, that's the little paper that the grocery store put on there, and it's okay to stay there because you're not going to use the outside of the hole. I already have the oven on 375, and I will put this in there for about 40 to 45 minutes, perhaps an hour, just depending on how long it takes to get to a soft hole. Now I'm going to prepare my cabbage. So I will cut off that part of the cabbage and slice it down the middle. And I can never get a, one day I'll learn to get a perfect half. <laughs> and, and I'm just cutting it up into pieces because I'm basically going to be shredding it. Well, not shredding it, but and you slice it to the size that you like. I didn't even know my husband liked cabbage. I cooked myself some cabbage one day. And I didn't cook my husband any. I just cooked him something else. And he was like, I like cabbage. I was like, oh, okay. Well, I know that for the next time. I've never seen him eat cabbage. But then again, I never cooked it either. I'm going to let that cook down. I'm going to put a little bit of water. Probably about a little less than half. Because the cabbage makes a lot of its own water. So I'm going to put a little less than half a amount of water in here. I'm going to let it cook down first a little bit before I season it. Only because if I season it now, the seasoning is not going to get everywhere that I want it to be. So I'll just put a little bit of water. 
and I put it on about medium heat and I'll put a top on it and I'll let that simmer for maybe about 10 minutes and then I'll check on it again. Okay, my cabbage is cooking down quite nicely. Uh, still not cooked down enough to where I'm ready to season it. And then I'm checking on my... Then I'm checking on my zucchini. Oh, this is not my squash, my spaghetti squash. But the outside hull is still really hard. And it's kind of how I know when it's ready. When it's just kind of really soft. When it has like a softer texture. So... That still got about 15 more minutes to go. Okay, I'm ready to add my seasonings. So I'm going to add some Mrs. Dash, and this is salt-free garlic and herb. Very good seasoning, the, the dash of Mrs. Dash. And because it's salt-free, and um, we know that cabbage is very bland, so put a little salt there. A little pepper and although that's garlic and herb I'm just gonna add, still add a little bit more garlic because I love a garlic taste okay my cabbage is all done my squash is all done and how I know is because see how it kind of dips in there the hull is not too hard I can stick my fork in that's how I know okay that's how my spaghetti squash looks right there and I'm gonna let that cool down before I start scraping out the spaghetti out of there. I wanna let it cool down so it's easier to handle. Okay, now that I have my spaghetti squash ready and my cabbage ready, it's time to, I put a little olive oil at the bottom of the pan. I have the pan on about medium. I'm going to saute some onions. Now I didn't see this recipe on YouTube, y'all. I'm just putting all this together. Like yesterday, I came up with something that was really good. I had spaghetti squash with sweet peas and shrimp, and it was really good. Spaghetti squash is such an awesome, nutritious, gluten-free uh, base that takes the place of pasta. At least for me, it does. And for a lot of people trying to eat healthier so I'm so glad to have found that option because y'all I love me some pasta I love rice and this has really been a satisfying substitute doesn't mean I'll never have real pasta doesn't mean I'll never have real rice but if I can have this most days and eat real pasta once a month then that's very satisfying for me so I'm gonna put about that much of garlic in there saute that in with my onions that I've already sweated. I'm going to go ahead and add my mushrooms. I purchased these mushrooms already. Purchased these mushrooms already uh, sliced up and it says pre-washed and ready but of course I washed, my, washed mine again. I just like to make sure that I will wash or wrench my own food off. Get all that goodness in there. Here is my mushroom, garlic, and onions, all sauteed and tasting great. So now it's time to start scraping the spaghetti out of my squash. And look, Derek, can see if you can zoom in there. And look how nicely it scrapes out. And it truly looks like pasta, you guys. It is so, it is just awesome. I'm going to put a little bit more garlic on there for taste and I'm going to put just a little pat of butter. Now my daughter was telling me I should try, uh, what was it Derrica? Smart Balance. Smart Balance. So just, just a little pat of butter but maybe I'll get some Smart Balance and try that but just to, just never underestimate just a little pat of butter. I'm learning to use less butter though because y'all I would have put about half a stick on this. 
but just that little pat and it's just gonna add just help the flavors kind of meld together and help that garlic kind of meld together in there my spaghetti squash underneath my mushroom mixture on top and the mushroom you see there's no meat but the mushroom tastes just like meat it tastes like you know a meaty texture and my cabbage so even though I got it so beautifully plated up right here I'm not gonna eat it right now cuz I gotta go to work soon so I'm gonna put it in a to-go box but of course I had to have it nicely plated so you all can see <laughs> 